So, now that we know what a capacitor is, let's talk about capacitance. Um, capacitance is the ability of our atoms to charge. So, we talk about resistance as its ability to resist charge, the motion of charge is our Capacitance is the ability to store charge. So, higher capacitance value, well, sorry, for measured ferrets, means that they have the, the greater ability to store charge. Now, that doesn't necessarily directly, well, it, it's not, they're not equal to each other. A high, uh, you know, a, so many ferrets means that you have so much charge. It just means that it has the ability to store charge. Now, how we measure the amount of charge that it can store is we say, well, the total amount of charge is proportional to the capacitance. Okay? High capacitance, high amount of charge, but they're not necessarily equal. Much in the same same way we said about Newton's laws and force and acceleration. It doesn't mean that you have a high force, you have a high acceleration. There's other terms that need to go in there, but they're certainly proportional. You increase the force, you increase the acceleration. If you increase the capacitance, you increase the total amount of charge that it can store. Now, the other controlling factor is the voltage. Voltage being this, this potential difference. But we also tend to think of voltage as being a sort of electrostatic pressure, the, the motivation for charge to move. So more motivation for charge to move means more charge ends up on my plates, therefore means more charge is saved. So more potential, more charge, more capacitance, more charge. And what we end up saying is that the total charge is equal to the potential times the capacitance. Okay? So the total amount of charge that's, that, a, that a capacitor can hold is equal to the amount of potential that is it's experiencing and the amount of capacitance that the device has. Okay? Cool? So that's basically what capacitance is. It's this ability to store charge. So you hook, hook, hook up a high capacitor with a high voltage, you're going to get a really high charge. Not necessarily the best thing in the world. Um, certainly one of the most dangerous things in the world but not necessarily the best thing in the world. The other thing about capacitance is, is the geometry. This is a more abstract way of looking at capacitance, but how much capacitance an object truly has is based on the geometry. So we talk about capacitance and charge being related. Now let's derive what capacitance is. Now capacitance depends on several things. The first thing this epsilon naught, okay, which can barely be seen. That's what we call a permeability factor. Okay, there are quite a few permeability factors in the universe. Um, the grand unification, or not the grand unification, but uh, Einstein's, uh, not Einstein's, Newton's universal gravity, there's a, there's a universal constant. Think of the permeability factor as another universal constant. It's how effectively electric fields travel through a, a medium, okay? So some objects will have high permeability factors, some objects will have low permeability factors. This is kind of a measurement of how well those electric fields will travel through there. The other thing that plays a critical part in capacitance is area. Now the area that we we're talking about is the size of the plates. This area. So here's my one plate. If that's a large plate, and it's a conductor, that means those charges have a lot of places to spread themselves out. So it should, therefore, directly affect the amount of capacitance it has. So large plate capacitors will have a large value for capacitance. Now, you can see some of the big cylindrical capacitors. And you may be thinking the area is something like this. But the truth of the matter is, those cylindrical capacitors are actually wound. They're in a circle. They're spiraling in and in and in with a, with a sheet of, like, looks like wax paper, in between them. Okay? So it's a large area, giving it a large capacitance. Okay? 
The other thing that affects the value of the capacitor is distance. And when we're referring to distance, we're referring to the distance between the plates. Okay? Because remember that the, 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 the charge here is creating an electric field, and that electric field motivates charge to move. Okay? So the greater the distance in between the field, the weaker the electric field is on this side. Okay? So that means that a greater distance is going to give you a smaller capacitance. Okay? And a smaller distance is going to give you a greater capacitance. There's more electric field. Okay? Cool? So if you have a so that's the geometrical way of talking about capacitance. We talk about the area, we talk about the distance, and we talk about um, the permeability factor, which is yet another factor, another constant in the universe. So we're looking at the area of the plate, the distance in between the plates, and then we're looking at the material that goes in between them. Okay. In some cases, when we talk about dielectrics, we could have a perma two permeability factors. We could have the universal constant and then what we call a, a scaling factor. So we may be introducing another material in here, therefore increasing the amount of uh, capacitance. And typically, that high permeability factor will come from things that are, uh, that are polarized. It's difficult. You have to waste energy to polarize everything in that system giving it a more opportunity to store more charge. Okay? So that's basically what a capacitor is. There's a few other things I want to talk about. Um, talk about energy, talk about capacitors and series, capacitors and parallel. Okay?